The type definitions for a node's Promisify function have two major flaws. Let's create proper typings in six lines of code. Let's get started. So before we start to implement our new type, let me show you the issue we will solve with this type. So we have this function here called callback. Now these kind of functions were used before we had promises. So how did they look like? We have any amount of arguments in there. Here we just have five strings. And the last argument in there is a callback function. So this means when we were done doing some asynchronous stuff, this callback function was executed. Some of them had a result and some of them did not. So the callback functions only could be in two different shapes. They could either have an error as a first argument and a result as a second argument, or they could have only an error without any result. But as soon as promises were introduced to resolve these problems with callback hells and these nested callbacks, Node also created a utility function which allowed us to convert callback functions into functions which return a promise. So let me show you how this works. Let's create a new variable and let's call this promisified. And what we can do is we can use the utility function from Node, which is called promisified and we can pass it our function we have here, so our callback. Now when we hover over this, we can see now that the type changed. We no longer have this callback as an argument in our function, but instead we have this promise which returns void. We still have our five arguments we pass in, and we can see here the types are still the same. Let's see what happens when I add a result in there, when I say result string for example. When I now check what I get as a type, we can see that I get the promise of string, because we now have a second argument in our callback function which has the type of a string. So this type here is always the same as our result argument in our callback. Now we can see one thing which is not really nice currently that we no longer have the names of our arguments. We only have arc1, arc2, arc3 and so on but we have lost the argument names of our callback function so a, b, c, d and e. For some of you, maybe this is not that big of a deal, but there is another issue we currently have. Let's go back into our function and let's just add another argument. So we add f in there, which is a string. Now what happens when we check the type here again? We can see now we don't have any typing at all. This is now just a generic function. And what is the issue with this? Well, when I now call this promisified function, we can see I can call this without any arguments. Now when I go up there and I remove the last argument, we now get an error again because now TypeScript can figure out that we need to pass some arguments. But why is it that when we pass in more than five arguments that we no longer have this proper typing? Well, let's go into the type definition. So I open the util DTS file and I'm already at the promisify type definition. Now we can see here there are quite some types in there. And this is not done in a generic way, but this is done for zero to five arguments manually. So we can see here we have this promisify function declaration, which takes one argument and it has a result. And we can see here this gets mapped to this function we pass as an argument. The arg1 has the type t1 and the callback has a result of type t result. Now we have the same function declaration without a t result down here. So the types are not reused, but they are just pasted in a second type without this t result. Because here we can see the callback here does not have any result and only has one argument. But as already mentioned, when I scroll down here, we can see this only goes up to five arguments. But the promisify function can work with much, much more arguments. It can work with 10 arguments or even more. Of course, maybe if you have a function which has 10 arguments, you maybe need to refactor it. But just so that you can see this is the issue why it's not possible to have proper type checking for more than five arguments. So let's go back into our promisify ts file and let's fix this with our own types. So let's first remove this here and the first thing we will do is we will create two helper types. So the first thing is we create a really simple callback type. So this callback type allows two different kind of functions. The first one is it can have an error which is optional and it's of type any and it returns void. This is the case when we don't have a result. Now the other possible callback type could be that we have an error in there, which is of type any, and we have a result, which is also of type any, and we return also void. Now these are the only two callback types which are allowed to be passed to our promisify function. Now the next type we create is a little bit more complicated because we need to have a helper type 
which we can pass a callback and it then needs to figure out if this callback function we pass in has one or two arguments. Because when we have a callback function which has only one argument, then we have a promise void type as a return. But if it has a second argument, then we want to store the type of the second argument into our generic promise type. So how can we achieve this? We create a new type and let's call this type get result. And we pass it in a generic argument. Let's call this generic argument CB. And this has to be of type callback. Now we can use the utility type parameters from TypeScript to figure out how many arguments are in our callback. So we call parameters here, pass our callback type here, and now we can use the index access and access the length property. Now when the length is 2, we want to extract the type at the second position. So we say parameters of our callback and we access the index 1. Because index 0 would be the error in this case, index 1 would be the result. And if this is not the case, Case, we just return void. Because when our callback does not have two arguments, then we don't have a result argument, so we just return void. Now we already have created these two utility types and now we can get started to implement the real type. So let's create a type and let's call this type promiseified. And this is a generic type, of course, which takes a function. So we have fn extends function in there. Now, what do we want to do? We want to extract the arguments of this function we pass in. And we want to store all arguments, but the last one in one variable and the last one in a second variable. This maybe sounds a little bit strange when you hear it first, but let me show you how we can do this. We say function extends, and then we make sure that this function is in a certain shape. So we say we want to spread our arguments we have here into a new array. And here we can use infer, so we can say we spread the first arguments we have in our args type and the last argument we have into our cb type. And now we make sure that this cb type extends callback like this. Now, maybe this approach looks a little bit strange at first, but what we are doing here is we say if this fn we pass in here is in this shape where it has some arguments, then please infer all the arguments and store every argument but the last one in our args type and the last one in our CB type. Now, the return value of this, of course, needs to be void because this is a callback function. So we say if this is the case, we want to do something. Otherwise, we return never because this is a branch in our code which never should be reached. And if it happens, then we cannot handle it and cannot create this promiseified type properly. But if this is the case, so if this function type we pass in has some arguments and returns void, we create our promiseified type. So we create a new function here, which takes any amount of arguments. And the types of these arguments are from the args type, which we have inferred prior. Now, the return here is a promise. But what is the generic type of this promise? We can use the get result type. So we call get result here and we pass it the callback type we have inferred prior. And the get result type will We'll now figure out if we have a result or if we return void. So let's close this here and we are already done with our type. Now let's use this type in our own function. So what we do here is let's create a new function here and let's call this function typed promiseify. This is a generic function and let's call this generic type fn and this extends a function here. And in there, we just pass in our callback function we already have, and we say this is of type fn. Now here it gets interesting because as a return type here, we return promiseified of our function we pass in. Now what is in our function body? We just delegate the call to the node promiseify function. So we say return promiseify and we pass it our function. And now, of course, we need to cast it because this promiseify function does not return the same type as our promiseified fn. So we say as promiseified and we pass our function here. Now, this is already everything we need to do. So let's now see if this works as expected. So let's go up there and let's have our old promise here and let's call promiseify with our callback. Now, when we hover over this, we can see that we get argument one to five and a return type of promise string. Now, let's see what happens when we call our typed promiseify. Now, let's hover over this. Now, we can see we get the same shape, but we get the real argument names we had in our callback function. So we have A, B, C, D, and E, and not args one to five like we have with the promiseify function from Node. So we can see this works perfectly fine. Now let's check if this also works without the result. So let's remove this here, and let's see when we hover over this, if this works, we can see we get A, B, C, D, and E as arguments, 
and we have promise void as our return type. So this also works perfectly fine. So we can see the first issue is already solved that we don't have the argument names we had prior, but only have args one to five in there. But let's see if the second issue with the restricted amounts of arguments is also resolved. So let's go in here and let's add another argument. So let's add F in there and let's hover over this and let's see what happens. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine. We now have this new type definition, which has our arguments A to F in there, and we no longer have only a function type. So now you can add as many arguments in there as you like, and it will always have this proper typing. But let's see if it still works when we add a result in there. So we add a result in there, and let's have a number, for example. And then we hover over this. As you can see, it still works. We still get the promised number here, and we get the resolve type definition for all our arguments. So let's backtrack a little bit what we achieved here. We replaced over 30 lines of type definitions from the utility TS file with only six lines and we made it much more type safe because our types are not restricted to zero to five arguments. And as a second advantage, we also don't lose the names of our arguments. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something useful today. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date for the newest TypeScript stuff. And also let me know in the comments what kind of topics you'd like to have covered in future videos. See you in the next one. Bye.